may not be as apocalyptic as a Terminator movie, but robots do seem to be taking over the country. Automation has already eliminated millions of middle-class manufacturing jobs. Fast food restaurants are experimenting with burger-making robots. Soon, self-driving cars could remove the livelihood for millions of American truck, taxi, and delivery drivers. What will the future look like when machines have made human workers obsolete? Former Dirty Jobs host Mike Rowe has thought about this quite a bit, and he joins us tonight on set. Hey, Mike. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so is this, is this an, I mean, it feels like an ominous development, is it? Look, I'm, I'm neither a, a historian or an economist, but um, you know the Luddite rebellion. Very well. Right. So 1820, Napoleonic Wars are over. Times are hard in England, and uh, the weavers are upset because the looms are all the rage. Yes. And the looms are coming to take our jobs, and that was the meme, that was the trope, and then there was bloodshed. I think they hung a couple dozen of those guys by the time the dust settled. Yes. So from what I've read and from what I've seen, in some way, shape, or form, the robots have been coming since then. You know, from the cotton gin to our own industry, you know, we've talked about the displacement theory and the way that, um, you know, that, uh, that, that TV was going to destroy newspapers and that cinema was going to end television and how the internet was going to end cinema. It never really happens the way we think it's going to happen. So I guess because of the show I used to do and because I'm running this foundation that's sort of work-centered, people ask me all the time if the robots are, not if they're coming, but when and how bad is it going to be. Yeah, how bad is it going to be? Well, I don't know, but historically it's not going to be anywhere near as bad as we think. That's actually heartening. I'm uh, an optimist. As a prediction. So one of the things that technology has unleashed is the internet and the ability for people anonymously to make claims that are untrue. Yeah. And among the many claims that uh, are untrue on the internet is the mail enhancement company that apparently stole your identity? <laughs> really? Yeah, really. We're I mean, not that I would know, not that they emailed me or anything, but you were a, a false version, an ersatz Mike Rowe was selling mail enhancement products on the internet. To, with, with great success, apparently. <laughs> there, there was a very, very detailed advertisement, uh, along with a really uh, detailed interview that never took place with me, okay, about my, uh, as my father put it, my problems in the boudoir. Uh, this was brought to my attention through an email that my dad sent me, which he, you know, he's like the town crier. He reads everything about me to my mother. He saw the ad and read the interview, and in the interview, I said that this new product that I had found made big changes. Big, bold changes for me. Transformed my life. Now, this, it's got, it's got my, my face, my name, and like three or 400 words in quotes from me, ostensibly, explaining how life was sad and disappointing until I got my hands on whatever this stuff was, Testo Max, <laughs> ate it, and then stand back. I don't know how big this thing gets, right? It was bananas. <laughs> And so I had to explain to my mother and my father that the interview didn't take place, that I'm not a spokesman for a company that does this. And it was baffling because it wasn't just a fake ad. It was a fake ad that appeared on a fake page from Us Weekly. And it also appeared in a fake page from Sports Illustrated and Playboy. So what these companies do, you talk about fake news all the time, obviously it, it, it is what it is, but fake advertising has always led to charge. And so I went on the Facebooks and I wrote about the egregious claims and the humility of having to talk to your parents about the fact that you never needed the product in the first place. But uh, <laughs> was, it, was there any recourse? Did you get the ads taken down? Did well, they... the next day, I mean, no, there's nothing you can do because they constantly change, the, like, the algorithm behind right. it. So it's, it's, a, it's this shape-shifting thing. But I got a call from the Better Business Bureau <laughs> the next morning saying, look, this was, this was very brave of you to come out and talk about this. I'm not brave. I'm just annoyed. And they're like, well, we should talk about really getting behind this because dozens of celebrities... Yes, Dad, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> have been, their names and likenesses have been co-opted to sell products that make you more all that. They've been selling Testo Max, too. There's a fine line yes. between annoyed and brave. There really is. You know, I mean, it's incredibly blurry these days. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, I have no idea. It's a curved line. It's a, it's a curved line. I will stop with that. Mike Roth, it's always great to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure.